hello and welcome to the video so as you can see from the title today i'm going to be talking about how to teach your new baby how to sleep now i have a two-year-old son and i'm soon to give birth to my second son so part of the reason that i am making this video is to refresh my own memory i had always intended to make this video back when Jed was younger, but I didn't. So now I'm kind of having to refresh my memory. So I hope this helps you. Um, if you're new here, my name is Alex and I do mum and lifestyle type videos. So I'd love to have you subscribe and let's just get into the reason why you're watching this video. So my very first tip is to go with the flow and kind of chill and try and relax in what's known as the fourth trimester. So the fourth trimester is like the first three months or so of the baby's life when they really, really need to just be close to you. They just want hugs and cuddles and closeness and don't try, don't stress too much about trying to get your baby into like a sleep routine or trying to get them to nap in their cot and things like that it's probably not going to happen in those first few months in the first few weeks babies are often sleepy and then they kind of wake up and it's harder to get them to nap so initially you might find it easier to pop them down and they'll sleep and then you might find it harder for them to have their naps also bear in mind that every baby is different and that sleep is something that has to be learned. So um, before I had Jed, I just always assumed that babies would know how to sleep. I just assumed babies napped and had naps and that it was really easy and you didn't have to think about it. But it's maybe that's true for some babies, but from what I've gathered, in most cases you kind of do have to put some effort into teaching your child how to sleep um, and setting them up so that they can do that and it does take perseverance and it is hard at the beginning but well worth it i think My, um so jed is two years and three months old and currently he still has one nap a day which is usually about three hours so at the beginning the sleep was really difficult but now he naps three hours a day and all through the night and it just makes things easier for me because i get to have a much needed break and personal space in the middle of the day um and yeah it's just it's well worth putting in the effort to to get them to, to know how to sleep okay so yeah just relax in the beginning now i'm going to talk to you about like setting them up to be able to have a good sleep so there's sort of two ways that we can look at this one is um, the things that you can use to help set up good sleep and the second one is the routine to set them up for good sleep so let's talk first about the things um, the things that are going to help you with helping your child sleep include um, having their room nice and dark during the day. So the darkness helps to produce melatonin, which is the hormone that helps you go to sleep. Um, so what we've done for a Jed and also set up for new baby is to buy block out fabric from a fabric shop and to attach it to the window with um, 3M Velcro and what it just makes the room really dark during the day so it doesn't look great on the window but who cares if your baby if your child is getting good sleep whatever and I just roll it up and clip it up when we're not using the blinds um next thing white noise so when the baby is in your womb it's actually really noisy in there there's heaps of activity going on there's lots of noises inside and a strong heartbeat yours that they can hear so 
when they come to the outside world and things are like you try to put them asleep and it's completely quiet it's actually not um their natural what they're used to so white noise is just another tool that you can use to help them to sleep you can get lots of um there are heaps of different products this is the one we use it's called skip hop you can buy it on amazon and jed is two and a bit and he still uses his so it also just cuts out some background noise while they're trying to sleep and it's a cue for them to sleep the next thing that we have used that's worked well for us is a comforter so this is ellie this is uh jed's ellie if you're familiar with my videos you will have definitely seen ellie around what um i started to do while jed was still um completely swaddled like with his arms in was to tuck this in just so he had something to like nestle into and then when he eventually had arms out of the swaddle he was able to cuddle ellie and i also ellie comes with some ribbons i attached some velcro dots so that we can actually put a dummy in there and loop it in and this just means that if he loop, uh, the dummy falls out it's easier for him to find a dummy and replace his own dummy um, rather than you know having to scream out for us to retrieve it for him so that comes a little bit later on but it's good to just sort of introduce the the comforter early on so the next thing that is going to be useful for baby sleeping is to swaddle. You can either swaddle with wraps, like muslin wraps and things. The reason this is good for babies is because when they're in the womb, they're nice and snug. It's what they're used to. So it's actually really comforting for them to be tightly snugged and um, swaddled. Snugged. Um, so you can use actual wraps. We did that for a little while before then switching to actual, um, you know, pre-made uh, swaddles and wraps. So initially the arms just go sort of in like this. Um, and then eventually when they've lost the startle reflex, which is um, newborn's reflex to go like this which wakes them up from sleep so that's why you want to have them nice and snug once they've outgrown that and i can't even remember when that is it might be a few months but jed was tucked in for ages we waited until he was like fighting out also as soon as they show signs of being able to roll you have to take their arms out of the swaddle so that's pretty much the setup in terms of things the only other things i would probably talk about would be to do with temperature so you want to get the temperature right and put them in the right clothing so that they're not too cold and not too hot i have made two videos talking in in more in depth about this so i'm just going to link those for you so that you can check them out if you need to so the second part is to do with routine now when jed was about four or five months old we actually did go and see some sleep consultants to get some tips on how to get him to nap better because i was finding that we would um we would put him down drowsy and he would just either stay awake and cry or we would put him down when he'd just fallen asleep and he would wake up within 10 minutes and we were doing a lot of holding him for the whole entire nap, um, which was just getting to be too taxing because I wasn't getting any kind of break, which some people might be okay with, but I'm someone who like needs a bit of a break. So um, some of these tips come from our experience and uh, feedback that we got from the sleep consultants. And some of it comes from our own sort of experimentation of a tactic that worked best for us. To begin with, I'll tell you the feedback that we got from the sleep consultants. So one of the things they told us was to um, always keep the sleeping environment, try and keep the sleeping environment the same for the daytime naps as it is for the nighttime. 
so don't be trying to like sleep them in a different room with different conditions in the day as night it's easier for babies to fall asleep at night or for people in general because of just natural circadian rhythms and um like the on the onset of melatonin putting you to sleep so you just want to kind of mirror what you do in the day to what you do in the night the, um it is true though for like the first few weeks they tell you to have your baby sleep uh during the day in sunlight to get them used to the daylight like to day and night but that's just for the first few weeks so in terms of keeping their sleep routine the same for day and night um so that would involve putting them to sleep in the same um bed or cot bassinet that they sleep in at night during the day same room same environment um and also the same thing so you want to introduce a routine that cues the baby to know that it's time for sleep we've been doing the same routine for jed since he was like five months old and so he knows now even though when it's nap time now he'll sometimes say no i don't want to sleep he knows once the routine starts that it's wind down time um i know some people can just like pick up their baby and put them into bed and they'll go to sleep that's fine our routine is a little bit more involved but um so i guess it does differ from child to child but what we do is we do so i will dim the light close the curtains have it nice and dim we'll put jed into his sleeping bag or swaddle as it is when they're little and then we lay on the bed we read a story and then it's time for bed so you get that like wind down time and it's consistent same thing in the day as night time so consistency is key another thing that you will learn from your baby as you just get to know them is the sleep cues um, to tell you when they're tired so there's sort of two different ways that you can combine to know when to put them down for a nap there are sleep programs that want you to follow like putting them to bed at set times i did follow one for a while and it may or may not have helped us i'm not really sure if it helped or hindered um so but there is a site that sort of gives you a guideline on how many sleeps and how much sleeps babies typically want so i'll um, link that below and that will give you a kind of guideline um in terms of like whether to wake your baby up from sleep to get them to stick to a routine we did wake jed up from sleeps like um to be able to fit in two uh, three naps and and then two naps um yeah we did wake him because we didn't want him to sleep for like three hours in the morning and then not have another nap but like there there's some people say never wake a sleeping baby look um we did and we've ended up with a child that sleeps very very well so i don't know jury's out for me on that one but yeah you have to do your own research on, on that particular point but in general i don't think it's such a bad thing to wake them up from a super long morning sleep so that they do get to have a second or a third sleep whatever stage you're at so um yeah but um in terms so there is knowing the guidelines of baby sleep but then there is also following your own baby's sleep cues about when to put them down so that's going to be rubbing their eyes i think newborns they like stretch their hands out like this or something hiccups it could just be like staring off into the distance um at the beginning for your first baby it can be really hard to know those signs and second guess yourself so that's when it's kind of handy to use those guidelines that say that actually tell you okay at the beginning your baby's gonna need a nap like 
every hour or hour and a half or whatever it is so my advice would be to like print off those guidelines just so that you have it as a general not thing that you have to stick to to the letter because every baby is different but just a guideline so that you know like okay in gen generally speaking baby will probably be up for about an hour and a half at the beginning before um, they need an extra another nap okay so now that we've talked about um, establishing a routine and setting up your sleep environment we've also talked about not particularly being too super worried about routines for the first few months now we can actually get on to talking about how to teach your baby to sleep once they're a little bit older so that um, four-ish month mark where you can start to teach them how to sleep now you're going to find all sorts of different programs and methods for this i'm going to tell you what worked for us first of all what didn't work for us um something i was never keen to try was uh like crying it out just like letting the baby cry and cry and cry till they um stress themselves out so much that they fall asleep i think that's unkind i don't like it um i think that's stressful and just stressful for them stressful for you i one time let jed cry um for about 20 minutes and i felt awful but it was a day where i was just not coping very well i was couldn't deal with it i was getting to the end of my tether with the sleep not happening and i just decided to try it it didn't work he just screamed for 20 minutes i ended up getting out him up and i felt incredibly guilty and it, it did nothing but it upset both of us so personally i do not like that method but yeah so that's not my method this is what worked for us so the reason this method worked for us though is because jed used a dummy still does um i don't know how to do this without a dummy so if your baby doesn't have a dummy or you don't want to use them i only know this method with a dummy i guess you could try this method without the dummy and just go in and like pat them or sing them a song or something till they calmed down and then when they calm down you just leg it out of there um that could work as well let me tell you what we did so eventually at around that four month mark i decided it was time that we needed to help jed to learn how to go to sleep himself so a big part of that is putting the baby to bed when they're drowsy, so ready for sleep, but not completely asleep. So you don't want to be getting into the habit of like rocking them completely to sleep and then putting them down because then they're always going to need that assistance to get to sleep. You want them to learn how to go to bed awake and then fall asleep themselves. So what we did when it was time for nap time and he was drowsy, we would do the, the little sleep routine, sing a little song, put him in the bassinet with his dummy and then leave the room. Then inevitably at the beginning, he would start crying. We'd let him cry for one minute and then I would have the monitor in such a way or look through a crack in the door so that I could see. If he was crying but still had the dummy in, I wouldn't go in. I wouldn't go in until he spat the dummy out and the reason for that is is when I went back into the room to comfort him I wanted to have something to offer him I wanted to be able to re-give him the dummy again so um first of all we would wait for one minute and if the dummy was spat out then I would go back in and give it back to him and then I would let him cry for two minutes and then three minutes and then up to five minutes. And if it still wasn't happening by then, I'd get him up. I did, I do remember reading something about like, if you have to go back in three times, then just can that nap, get up, try it again later. But I think I just did up to five times 
it just ended up working for us that way. So this whole process took about, I want to say three, maybe four weeks until magically he just started going to sleep himself. And with every single nap, it was just like we were having to go in there less and less frequently. So it was a very sort of um, noticeable uh, and gradual transition from the beginning where it was like complete refusal to then gradually he would just fall asleep by himself. I think the reason that this method really worked, a couple of reasons. One, having leaving them alone crying for short increments of time and then going into them shows your baby that you've not gone because your baby just wants to know that you are there for them and they don't want you to be um gone they don't they worry when you're gone they want to see you so when you come back into them it gives them that comfort and reassurance mummy or daddy hasn't gone anywhere we're still here for you if you need us so you don't want to rid them of that okay you want to have like a trust trusting loving relationship with the baby from the get-go so i think that really helps them to feel calm okay mummy hasn't gone missing she's still right here if i need her or daddy the second reason i think it worked was obviously the dummy because when we went back in to comfort him we could offer him the dummy and i think like by the time you're letting them cry for a few minutes like you build up to the few minutes then they're so relieved to get that dummy back that they kind of are just like oh, and then they relax and probably helps them sleep um with the one two three minute thing i did that for every nap like it's not like i started at one and then got to three and then the next nap started at three minutes no i always started at the like one minute mark one of the methods that we had been taught was to like pat the baby's bottom or pat their chest put a hand on their chest um that type of thing but all that wasn't working for us at all which is why we tried something different but you could certainly try those things to comfort them and then when they're comforted leave so that's another part of it as soon as we went in there it would be a really quick like okay here's the dummy and then leave even if they start crying again just don't just give them the dummy and then leave don't hang around for them to be like stimulated don't make eye contact just go in there little pat dummy leave okay so that's how we did it and i think by i think by the fifth month or fourth or fifth month he had learned how to sleep by himself and it was like my world just became so much easier because up until then I'd been having to sit in the chair in the dark and like hold him to have sleeps and it, as I said it was just not having any personal space or a break was doing my head in. So yeah that is how it worked for us and We've just always kept up with um, uh, following Jed's sleep cues and following guidelines for numbers of sleeps and just going with the flow of what he needs. And as I said, like to, he's a really great sleeper now. Oh, one last tip I would say, um, when your baby is napping at the beginning, having three naps a day, what I did to give um, me a break from having to do that routine three times a day was for the last sleep of the day I would do a walk nap so I would do two naps in the bassinet and then the third one I'd swaddle Jed up in the pram when he was getting sleepy and I'd go for a walk and he would have his nap in the pram so that was good because I was getting out, getting some exercise and fresh air and he was, you know, having a nice little nap 
Um, and then winter arrived and it was too dark to do that. So then we did what we called cuddle naps and we would just sit on the lounge and hold him for that nap and have a little shut eye ourselves. So I would do it or Lindsay would do the nap on the weekends. And what was really lovely about that was also that we were just getting that lovely cuddle time in with our baby that, you know, they're obviously not going to be able to have that type of cuddle time forever. So I really enjoyed doing that because it was a change up from having to do the whole routine again. And it was like a guaranteed easy way to get a nap in. And doing that did not affect his ability to nap in the bassinet at all. He still have the two other naps well so yeah um don't be afraid to sort of change it up a little bit um we never took jed for drives to do a sleep i we didn't do a drive like we didn't drive for the purpose of getting a nap in until really really recently when we were on a camping holiday and it was too hot for Jed to nap in the tent. So we would take him for a drive to do the nap instead. But we never got into that habit at the beginning because I knew that it would be hard to break. Um, so yeah, we just sort of did put the, the hard yards in at the start. And yes, it was stressful at the start. Those first few months are hard when you when they're not napping by themselves and it is hard when you're trying to teach them to nap um, and fall asleep when they're fighting it at the beginning but they do they can get it and they they usually will get it i know all babies are different but that's our experience and it's worked for us so i'm going to end that there i hope that you've taken some tips from this that can help you with sleep and this has also been really good for me as a refresher to what we did so thanks so much for watching and i hope to see you again soon bye